seen any more Oscar films? You have a booger hanging out of your nose. <laughs> <laughs> nope, still there. It's gross. Is it really my left nostril? <laughs> nope, tissue? still there. No, I don't have a tissue. Go fix it, though. <laughs> Can you help me with this? I literally don't want to stare at that the entire time. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid rank sheets of Corbin. They wrote a song about me called Boogie Wonderland. And you follow Instagram and Twitter? Instagram! Oh juicy, juicy content! My nose has got some juicy content. Gross. Is it all good? You'll fit. You can come in. Is it all good? <laughs> Unfor yeah, I don't want to look in your nose. You open the door more. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny's coming in the room. <laughs> Bless her little heart. <laughs> I have clothes hanging on the door. She's got a nice coffee in her hand. She has her salad in the other hand. She's got her bag on her shoulder. It's a tight little room that we're in. Yeah, it is. Anyway. Um, but anyways, uh. Uh, today we're doing a movie review, little boys and girls. And everyone in between. That's true. And uh, today we're doing a movie review of the 2004 film, uh, Virumandi. Virumandi? Is that how you pronounce yeah, that? Yeah, it's weird. IMDb has it spelled like that. I have it spelled, I guess it's the same... I, is it Virandi? V I R A A I? I don't know. I, I hate that we always have that problem because the titles are important. Yeah. I'm going to say Virumandi. But it's written, directed, produced, and starring. Um, how would you say that name? Yes, Cam it is Virumandi. It's just missing an A. Kamili Hasuna? Is that how you pronounce that name? And Drani just, just <laughs> stopped everything she was doing and looked over at Corbin as if. For a split second, she thought he was being real. <gasps> Kamal Hassan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's how we would have done it three years ago. Mm -hmm. No, we would have probably we would have come closer. Anyway. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. it's the stars, uh, stars, stars written, directed, written, directed, directed, directed produced, 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 edited, and also sung, composed uh, by Raja Sir. Um, so uh, this is obviously going to be a hundred percent spoiler review. Obviously, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, we saw it on. A random site so you might be able to have better access to it than we did obviously being in india um but obviously once again 100 spin sport review came out almost 20 years ago wow so rick your initial thoughts please well this is our 21st of the year our 20th tamil by the way pebbles isn't on our tamil list on, on the playlist yeah on the playlist because i looked at our playlist and i was looking to see oh, that i might have missed 19 it. yeah i, I, I double checked it. our list and i double checked the thing so this is our 20th Demo, uh -huh. our 229th all time. One can't help but wonder if what Kamal Hassan was setting out to do with Viramandi and its accompanying Rashomon effect was to not only tell us a story about how differing perspectives shape our beliefs, values, and rules about criminals in our society, but to tell us a story about how differing perspectives also shape our beliefs, values, and rules about artists in our society. And that's why the more I watch Kamal Hassan, the more I love Kamal Hassan. I've seen enough of him to know now that he has everything you could ever wish for in a cinematic artist. A full-blown, balls-to-the-wall, letting-it-all-hang-out genius of multiple talents who is constantly challenging themselves and throwing all of themselves into their works and leaving huge pieces of themselves in their work in the process. He is the wild bull in this film. Raging, untamed, and refusing to be ridden by talking heads in the movie business and making films he wants to make, letting his artist's heart run and roam forever free. Oh, that the world of cinematic artistry had more artists like Kamal Hassan. So, yeah, you could say I'm in. <laughs> Hold on. Whoa, that's two Tamil films in a row. Rick. I know. What is going on? You're supposed to hate all South Indian it's films. It's true. I'm supposed to fit the stereotypes that everyone has for me, but I don't. <laughs> I really, I really, really enjoyed this film. Actually, it might be one of my favorite Kamal Hassan films. And it took, yep. it took me a second, though, about an hour. Uh, oh yeah. To, I mean, I was liking it, but I yeah. was like, okay, this is a little confusing for ob an obvious reason. Okay. Once again, this is going to be a spoiler review. It was in the beginning tracking who everybody was and what was yeah. going on was tough in the first fifteen until you 20. figured out exactly what he, did, he was doing. I was like, I hope I don't get lost in yeah. this. So Agreed. I was like, okay, there's a lot going on here. Yep. I don't. I and I'm not. And then. When it finally came in and Kamal Hassan stepped, I mean, I know he'd been in the film, but when he stepped into the, the interview, that one, that was a powerful performance of his, just in that interview setting there itself. Yep. I mean, he's, one of, he's one of the best actors ever, right? But yep. um, <laughs> from that moment on, I was like, it was, 
It was a fantastic. It might be one of my favorite Kamal Hassan performances and films that we've seen thus far. Agreed. And we've only it's, seen very few. It's really tough, but I'm so grateful for the stupid family making the suggestions you've made in the films we've seen thus far because I, I'm, and I'm not saying the other ones probably aren't as genius, but I can say, like I did in my paragraph, that after now having seen what I've seen, uh, yeah. he, he's the he's one of the most important contributors to film, in 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 acting wise, in direction wise, in just the biggest thing for me that I've learned about him is what I wrote in that he is the quintessential cinematic artist. He's everything you want people to be in their gifting, in their their focus, in their in their film IQ. Um, and I would say, like, of, of what we've seen thus far, if someone said to me, what would you say is the film that is, like, the most, not autobiographic, but the one most revealing of the DNA of this man, I would think it's this one, because I know, he's riding only the bull, seen getting kicked off, doing the jumps and the flips and the things, some of the things, we'll get into the technical aspects of the cinematography he always and tries the people. He, he always tries to do stuff that pushes the he technological does. boundaries but for the time. Just with the acting alone, uh, I know one of the people he admired most was Marlon Brando. Mm -hmm. And what I love about Kamal Hassan is that he doesn't impersonate Brando. He just does what Brando did, which was be in the moment, mm -hmm. listen, and be dangerous. He's a very dangerous actor. And that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite things about Kamal Hassan is he's just, he's he anything could happen at any moment with this guy. Yeah, and we'll get into all that. This will be obviously Kamal Hassan heavy review since he did everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be a, a heavy, but let's, um, it's his acting first. Yeah, uh, for for Kamal Hosai and, and, and the acting in general, and because I, I think actually everybody did really really well, um, but obviously Kamal Hosai in this performance, I was a very different performance than anything of him we've seen so it far. It really is. It's uh, it was a, it, it's extremely different. He was he looked different. Obviously, the mutton chop yeah, slash mustache thing was epic. He, even his anger was different. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the in the same way, like. He didn't fully shape shift, as it were. Like I could still see Kamal Hus yeah. Hassan, but not everybody has to completely disappear in their character. Tom I mean, Hanks doesn't really it, ever. Not, exactly. But what I did notice was, like, compared to other characters he's played that get angry, uh, this th there was just something different about this guy, and I believe him. He's he. I've grown to appreciate him so much as an actor that especially those quiet moments like the interview mm -hmm. or the very final scene at the news desk which those those documentary tv news moments felt like real real yeah they did a great job i mean they looked complete I, if you showed that to somebody and told them nothing and just said what do you think of this news clip they wouldn't question it was a news clip yeah i i literally thought they were like showing us like a real yep documentary that they were making and this film yep. was going to be kind of like off of that right kind of kind of stuff they did a really good job making those the, it actually seemed like it was a, a real documentary, a real news segment, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, my favorite, I mean, I had a bunch of favorite moments of him, but my favorite moment was right when he stepped on and at, at the hour mark, essentially. When uh, he took the interview he chair? Took the interview chair? Yeah. It was like a different weight of presence just sat down. And he had been in the film, obviously, the entire time. Uh -huh. But obviously, he was carrying a different weight at that moment <laughs> in the film. And also, who you thought this man was. Well, and we got, at that moment, I referenced it in the paragraph, we got the perspective change. So for anybody who doesn't know, I referenced in the paragraph that there's the something called the Rashomon effect. And I forgive me if I mispronounced the name of the film. There's a film in the 1950s in Japan that was, as far as we know, the first time in cinema where... The same story is told from two different perspectives. Yeah. And actually, the show that Andrani and I have been watching called The Affair, that's one of our favorite things about the show. You know, the first the first half of one episode will say Noah. And then the second half of the hour, it'll say Allison. And it's the exact same events, but it's from different perspectives. And everything changes, including like how in Noah's perspective, he was dressed a certain way where he felt he was dressed nice and she's complaining that he doesn't look nice enough for where they're going. And then in Allison's perspective, you see he's dressed really inappropriately uh -huh. and it's simply giving you the two perspectives. So mm -hmm. I, I felt like that that was one of the very beginning points and a credit to him as well with his acting that he gave us a little different perspective based on the perspective yeah. we were seeing. Yeah, his, his his whole performance in this was was really good. I think it might be my favorite performance of his. Um, just I, I, of, might, I think I agree with you. Just because of how intense. I mean, I know he's given a bunch of really good ones in the past, <laughs> no. obviously, but this one was it's really up my alley too. Uh, this this style of 
acting and this this kind of character. It's a grittier and, and kind of more um, balls to the wall, essentially, for raw. lack of a, yeah, raw. dangerous, freaky. Um, and so I think he did a really good job with this character. Um, He's an amazing it was, artist. It was really, really cool. And then to his his um, the, the female opposite of him. Yes. Uh, uh, forgive mispronouncing your name. I believe it's pronounced Avirami. Apparently, we saw her near Mirak Bar Anthony. Uh, no. no, that's that's not the original. Oh, is that not? No, no, that's a remake. It was a remake. Yeah, it's probably terrible. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I. She was great. She was wonderful. She gave a. She has really good, uh, really good presence. Yeah, that's good for. I was thinking about the dummies for next year, and we probably need to do dummies for the f films released that year, and then anything from the past. Well, essentially, because this is like the first year since the pandemic happened. Right. That we're we're going to get real releases. We're going to get a lot. A lot of them. So she, for me, I would, I, for me, in the dummy categories, this got picture, direction, actor, him, actress, her, best supporting actor, Pasupathy, and if I mispronounce your name, sir, forgive me. Um, and we saw him in... Um... Uh, uh, the boxing. Yes, I recognized him immediately. Immediately, I was like, he's just younger here, <laughs> but and he's still as strong of an actor. Just as good, thespian all over the place, man. He's so good. I want to see a lot more of him because he's Abs he is a great actor. Yeah, he is. Just yeah. a great actor. Just as good as uh, obviously just a very different role, but still as his his presence is he he brings a weight to it, which is crazy because he's not an intimidating looking guy to me. No, but, but his he, eyes are. Yeah, he brings this intensity and yes, this presence his to him. eyes are intimidating. And, and it's kind of similar. Uh, it actually might be a good comparison. Um, 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 Joe Pesci. One of the most unintimidating. Very good, very good comparison. It's, very, it's a stretch, but yeah, yeah. if you know Joe Pesci, you know what we're talking about. If you, just, if you saw Joe Pesci, you didn't hear him talk, and you just saw him standing on the street, you'd be like, oh, one this really small person. Right. Which, and, and he, he looks just like a nice guy. Just looks like a nice guy. guy. But, like, obviously in his acting... He's an intense Very person, dangerous. and he he's he looks so uh, like dangerous, like you said, in in, in all of the stuff he does. Yep. Uh, even like in Home Alone, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's true. He's Joe Pesci, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I love Joe Pesci. But yeah, I, I it's a similar vibe I get of somebody who I normally wouldn't like. Fafa has like an intensity about him. I could see him like being crazy, like in sure. per in person, sure. Uh, not not in real life, but I'm talking like just if you see somebody, he has a more not his intimidating uh, demeanor about him, mm -hmm. but he brings the weight in his eyes and his performance. I, I the minute I saw him, I was so excited because I, we liked him so much, mm -hmm. and he he did exactly in this what he did in that film, which was really impress me. The three of them carrying the film, every moment they're on screen, it's just fun to watch great actors doing great work. Say her name again, please. I believe it's Abhirami. Yeah, her and Kamal had great chemistry. Great chemistry. So every moment of them together was believable. Mm -hmm. And didn't we hear that song? Was that the song Kamal Hassan sang with Raja Sir when he wasn't feeling well, their love song? It's, it's possible. Because I, uh, the moment that song started, that's in my mind, it I was like... It sounded familiar. I don't know where I heard it, though. Uh, yeah, I know, I'm sure we've heard that song live. But yeah, their, their chemistry was great. That whole montage, once it got to his perspective, and then they went into their love relationship. I thought it was a really cool reveal, obviously, when they went from the first perspective. Yeah. And she came to the door, and he said, stay I in your house. Yep. And then you figure out what was going on behind that yeah. when it was switched. It, it was really, really good. And we'll talk about... Credits I guess directing. We'll get into that. Directing and writing, yeah. I think, one of the most brilliant parts of this entire film. I agree. Um, because, like I said, it took me about an hour to really get in. Because I was like, I was enjoying it in the first hour, but there was a lot going on. I was trying to keep up with who's who. Right. And what... what everyone's deal is and what whose name is whose name yeah, whose name is whose name but right literally when Kamal sat down in the chair and I they switched to his perspective I was like okay I know what we're doing now right and then they basically went over the film again from another which I love that idea me too I don't usually like um, films because I think it's like a cliche thing to do now of like you sit somebody down and you're telling a story and then it goes into the right. the thing. Obviously, back in the day, it wasn't cliche, right. but it's and become that, right. cliche. It has become. So has for become the cliche. audience of today, you see it and it seems repetitive, forgetting yeah. the fact that 
this was very groundbreaking. Very groundbreaking at the, the time. time. But yeah. also, it, it brought a different element to that. It did. I mean, I know you're, obviously, you talked about, I don't know that, that film specifically. Yeah, it's a TV, uh, TV series. TV series. Uh, no, the, not The Affair, the uh, the Japanese one. The Japanese oh, yeah, I've never seen the film. I just know of it. Yeah. And uh, what they call that, the effect from that film. Um, but I love that idea, because obviously, it's, there's so much, you because it's obviously talking about how your perspective can change just by who's telling you the story. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we talk about that all the time. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, and uh, I think um, Clint Eastwood did a film, but it was two different films from correct different. from two different perspectives. But and the reason that's important, obviously, in this story, was because a lot of this had to do with the legal system, and obviously the the, the, the primary topical thing they covered, which was death the death penalty. Yeah. But I really wonder, and would love if we ha if that would be one of my questions if we ever had the honor of talking to Kamal Hassan, would be. Was was one of your intentions with this was to not just do that as a primary focal point, but was it to use that as something as a, as a of a metaphor? I mentioned that in my paragraph of the way artists are often viewed and how what they do in artistry it's a matter of perspective and how the the, the community of artists is often considered the outcasts in the way that criminals are sometimes wrongfully mm -hmm. accused of being outcasts and not given respect or perspective i mean even even something perspective wise is calling a jail they're what they were originally supposed to be called are correctional facilities mm. but they're not they're they're punitive cages in many respects and whether or not someone's guilty in most courts of law isn't always based on truth that's based on who won the legal case yep. who got the perspective and that was at the forefront it was all public's perspective as well yeah know. yeah so i thought i I don't know if he had that as an ancillary or undercurrent metaphor, but I felt it. Yeah, it's a very interesting topic too, obviously, because that's a that's a touchy subject. I, I don't know if it is illegal in India now. I don't know if it. Like, yeah, the, I don't know, the, the, Indrani. Do you know is the death penalty is it the same in all of the states in India? Is the death penalty legal? Is it not legal? Does it differ depending upon? Not uh, sure. Okay. Oh, uh, it's it's legal here, um, and it's it's a massive. Well, massive. it depends on what state you're in. That's true. Yeah, um, I, I think California is still legal. They just don't. They do don't it. do it. They don't. Yeah, it's, it's been a it's been a while since uh, they have. Texas will execute you, looking at you sideways. Yeah, I think they've had the most. It's yep in the past uh, many years. Yep. But yeah, so it's a big debate. No, obviously, no matter where you go. And so I love that that films bring up that touchy subject that people have very different different of opinions about. I I, th I don't think there's anything Kamal wouldn't talk about. I think if there's anything that he feels a particular passion about. He'll make a film about it, and he could have everybody going, please don't, please don't, one, and he would do it if he feels he needs to talk about one it. One thing I've always loved about him is that not only him pushing the boundaries in terms of, like, VFX. Everything. But also in terms of, like, intimacy yep. on film. I mentioned that to Andrani. Yeah, like, this one was incredibly, you were basically having sex on screen almost, yeah. right? Yep. <laughs> well, they, they were doing something. <laughs> Straight up, I love, and, and some of it was, some of it was, uh, Hinted at, like when yeah. she was on her hands and knees and he yeah, came yeah, up yeah. behind her. And yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, I wonder what he's wanting us to know yeah. there. And then some of it was just overt. He does not shy away. I mentioned this in Hey Ram. I loved the the rawness of his and Ronnie McCurgy's yeah. relationship. And it, yeah. it added to that sense of believability in the, the, the depth of their attraction to each other. And again, with these two, I felt they were completely uninhibited. I really believed they were in love with each other. And I do. I, I love... I know that this the rating system at the time for this movie, because of that and because of the violence, mm -hmm. was like. Can we talk about the violence? Let's talk about. Oh, the I love the talking about violence. <laughs> uh, it yeah, was this, so good. This one was obviously. You could call it a little <laughs> cheesy at times because of the like how far away, uh, how long ago it was, and right. how different it is now and what you do. But obviously, if I'm going off the going time, off the time, and what they put on screen, which it, and we've seen a lot of films from that time now in India, and obviously, it's you can't compare it to what they were doing here in America at the time. No, that's obviously. not that's not fair. Um, but at, even at the time in India, yep. What they were doing, man. <laughs> I loved all of the arm chops, the leg, leg chops, chops, the blood and coming even, out of the... Even things that strained credulity. Like, sometimes there would be... There were a couple of continuity things where he got hit in the thing with the, the, the machete and then it wasn't there, but then it was there. Yeah. Totally forgivable. I saw that. As was some of the mortal wounds that some people got where they really would have bled out in about 30 seconds, yeah. and, but they, they lived for another five, six minutes. Mm -hmm. All of that was so forgivable. Mm -hmm. And so much of that is 
just, again, what I mean by that balls to the wall. I want you to see this because I, I'm, I'm for, he's just, I think there's nothing he wouldn't do to, he wants you to see the visceral reality of the way things play out in certain situations. And has there ever been a more fantastic or iconic death of the antagonist than that ending death for uh, um, uh, the name of his character in the movie? Um, uh, Pasupathy. Oh. oh. When he gets launched off the off of the roof. That, that I wrote down in my notes as I was watching it. I wrote down and said, has there ever been a more incredible way for... And kudos, this is a dummy nomination. The stunt work in this was so, so good. Yeah. I, I wonder how many people got hurt on set because some of the stunts, especially the bullfighting sequences... Yeah, that was one I hated watching it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's tough to watch. Because <laughs> I just... Obviously, that's not what the film was about, and it didn't ruin my experience, obviously. But, um, do just, you? I had this thought watching it. Do you not like rodeos? Oh, I hate rodeos. Okay, that, that I, makes I, sense. I, that makes sense. I don't like anything that you make an animal do that he wouldn't already have done. Like putting an animal to work. Right. Outside of like horses and sheep, cattle, dogs, and th th that's not really a show. That's their working. This is Those dogs love to do yeah, that. And the horse, horses, horses love, love to do that. what they do. I, I, do have, the animal, well, I do have a problem with the pony, like the. the, the the ponies going around and around and around mm -hmm. and pony rides pony rides yeah for kids so yeah. like stuff like that it doesn't ruin my experience it's just a personal I, I just it's it's hard for me to watch stuff especially when it's stuff like that they're literally pinning down this animal yeah whatever it's cultural that's not what this film's about. Yeah, no. but I just that's my opinion of it. Um, but I, I do I did I do agree that the scenes where they were shot were intense, and I guarantee there were so many people that actually got incredibly and so injured. good because there could have been a lot of choices that he made, and this goes again to the heart of this guy as an artist. There's so many shortcuts he could have taken. There's so many things he could have done to try to make it look good, mm -hmm. and it might have come off as cheesy, but it was so obvious that he was wanting everything to look as believable and as real as possible. He didn't want any stand-ins for himself. He wanted to make sure they were using a real animal. There were some shots in that whole sequence where I thought, how the crap did he just do that and not get hurt? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the other thing that's just evidence of what we've seen him do. I really feel, I, I know he learned something brand new for this. I feel like there's nothing, he's like Tom Cruise. You may not like Tom Cruise as an actor, Tom will do anything. Mm -hmm when it comes to stunt work. And he'll think of stuff outside the box and his life insurance people will go, you've got to sign off on this because this is nuts. And I feel like there's nothing Kamal Hassan, if you said to him, I want you to do this, 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 and this, and we're going to put some scorpions in the thing and then they're going to put some boa constrictors around your feet and some pythons behind you and you're going to be thrown into this live thing of piranha. He'd be like, is it going to, the story's going to come through on that? I'm in. Yeah. I, mean, I, I love I, it. I, I do think he's one of those artists. And also, uh, something on her, um, Ab, Ab, um, say your name. Sorry, Ab Hirami. Um, and especially towards the beginning, she was giving me vibes of what I was um, hoping. Like Alia was, like the, that character in Gungabai. Yep. She was giving me those those vibes, and obviously she's much older now, and so she couldn't have played that character. But that's she was giving me some of the vibes of, of the what, what I wanted of from right, right, from, right from that character in that film. Yeah. Um, I think it might have been just the glasses because she looked a lot like. It could have been, been uh, yeah. Could thing, have been. but she she's a very strong actress, um, and also I thought the the score in this by Raja Sir uh, was was really incredible and also very. I felt it was very Tamil, a lot of the songs. In, yeah. in the way they they filmed it. I I don't know how often they've worked together, but I can't think of a pair of a director and a composer that work better together, and I'm talking like. Vishal and Vishal. Yeah, <laughs> Vishal and Vishal, but like, you know, the, the, the penultimate f for me cinematically is obviously Spielberg and, and John, Williams. John Williams. But I would go, I could easily go back and watch this just for, uh, just for the score and watch, pull yourself out of the story now that you know the story and just watch the way that they work this together and how some things sound more frenetic during the fighting sequences and how some things sound more 
more appropriate to what you would expect to happen with village life and then how you would expect some things to happen where there's no sound whatsoever. The documentary sec sections have no score at all, no. which makes which lends toward, that's a definitive choice to not have score happening in those moments. And the other thing about the, the, the cinematography, mm -hmm. he, he like did everything throw in the kitchen sink with. I mean, he, he, he even said that. Even stuff, obviously, for the time that I'm sure they didn't have the budget for to do it the way he wanted to, no. and, and the to um, the. I was going to say something, and then I literally just lost it. So go on. <laughs> okay, even things as simple as rather than do a cutaway when they're looking at him in the hospital bed, and they're standing in the bed, and then like four or five people are talking into camera, and it's the, supposed to be talking to Kamal. Rather than do cuts. He does these bleeds so that the one person morphs into the other person. That's much more difficult to do than just doing a fast edit. What do you, th what do you think about the, the one they were on the motorcycle and it was supposed to be nighttime? And oh. <laughs> do you think it was daytime and they just made it look like nighttime? Yeah, I know they did. <laughs> but I, I loved it. Yeah. I thought it worked. It worked. But it was like... It was I think there's people who watched that and would not know. It was clearly Clearly daytime it was daytime, that they, blue they, shot. They, yeah. They, put over <laughs> but it, it worked as did there was one beautiful sequence i don't know how many times he tried to get the shot but he and and uh his, his the girlfriend the wife uh abhirami the actress he's just fallen on top of her and is kissing her and it's obviously going to be an intimate moment and the 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 lantern the light the torch lands on the ground and cameras on ground they're on the the mattress or the bed wherever they are and the the focal point of the camera captures the light as it just rolls like this rolls like this and then centers itself and makes the background unable to be seen because of the glare and then he fades into sunrise and the sun is in the exact same position that the torch was in facing lens I, I, it happened and I, the minute it was rolling i thought he's he did this I don't know how many times that thing's not going to stop until it's dead straight into lens and everything else gets blacked out. And then, of course, he does the fade in and takes it up a notch. So that, you can talk about Kamal Hassan, the writer. You can talk about Kamal Hassan, the actor. And you can talk about Kamal Hassan, the director. And he is equally brilliant mm -hmm. in all aspects. Yeah, it's hard to find somebody that's comparable to him in terms of like how good they are at each specific thing outside of... Vishal being a good composer and a director. Right. Well, and then so we never seen him act though. He's a dancer. Yeah. He's a singer. Mm-hmm. I who? Like I love Mel Gibson, right? Mel Gibson is a yeah, really he, good actor. He's an actor, right? And he's director. a brilliant director, and he can write. I guess Clint Eastwood would be similar in that yeah, aspect. Yeah, but he also edited this. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. And I don't know that those guys can sing, and I don't know that those guys oh, can, I can dance. Guarantee they can't. Is there anybody in film that is so. that's that is basically can do pretty much every discipline? Granted, there might be. It's just, especially here in Hollywood, you don't get that opportunity. Nobody's going to be like, okay, I want you to do everything. It could if you had the level of, like, somebody of Tom Cruise's caliber. He can do whatever the heck he wants to do, but he doesn't do those things. Yeah. And also, also I'm it's sure kind of nuts. I don't know how. Do that. I don't know how you stay sane. Doing all that. Doing all of that. Doing one of those is, is, is a lot of work. Just one of those, yes. those, those things. But uh, to do acting and directing at the same time is a incredible feat for a feature film of this magnitude. Yeah. Um, but obviously to be in every single uh, part of the process is... I can't fathom it. Like I've told you, I just I directed and starred in something once. It was a play. And I hated it because I couldn't take the director hat off no yeah. matter what I did. I couldn't act, and I want, uh, which sucks, because every time I was acting, I was thinking about everything else that's happening with every other person, because that all matters, and I have to give notes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really crazy, but yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this film. Like I said, it might be my favorite performance of his, one of my favorite films of his overall, in general. Um, but obviously, we've seen what five of his, something, yeah, something. five, five or six, and he probably has over a hundred. Yeah, at least. Oh, and quick shout out. I I did some studying. I know how many sets were built for this. So how many? Pretty much everything. Oh jeez. Yeah, if just you, built. Built, created. So like, 
a production design and art direction on this would get a dummy nom because so much of the stuff that they did, like in the village itself, so much of that was just freestanding stuff created by the construction team. So, that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm hoping the man can be our dose one day. Oh my goodness. Uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> that would be extraordinary. Well, well, please let us know what you thought about this film and what should be our next Kamal Hassan film. I know that'll be highly debated in the comments, obviously, because yeah. he has so, so many. Yeah. Uh, and he's obviously one of those <laughs> beloved And actors. they're probably all brilliant. Yes. Uh, so please let us know what the next Kamal Hassan film should be.